Welcome to The Message from the Mount, a virtual experience of the Mount Olive Baptist Church designed to encourage, uplift, and inspire you. Here at the Mount, we are a caring church building family through transformational ministry. Once we're able to fellowship in person, we hope you will join us. Until then, we pray that you are blessed by our service. Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship experience. We are so excited that you decided to join us this morning. So we want to lift up the name of Jesus and give God all of the praise, glory, and honor for he's so deserving of it. Amen. First things first, we ask that you share this video. Like and share this video so that we can spread the gospel all over social media. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited about the Lord on today? We are excited to be in the land of the living. Wherever you are in your homes, in your car, in your room, or in your kitchen, we ask that you just get a spirit of praise and worship. Amen. The song is called, I Call You Faithful. Anybody know God to be a faithful God? Hallelujah. We want to just lift up the name of Jesus right where we are and right where you are. Amen. Come on. Say, I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. You have been faithful to me. Help me say. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. Faithful you are. And faithful you be. Come on and lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Said, I call you holy God. I call you holy God.
call you holy. Your name is holy. You have been holy to me. Come on and help me say, I call you holy. Your name is holy. holy you are. I want to lift up the name of Jesus right where you are yeah. for being a holy God, amen, for being a faithful God, yeah. for being an awesome God, yeah. and for being an all that God. God bless you. Amen. We give God praise. We give God glory. We thank God for another week that he has kept us. He has kept us from all evil with our minds stayed on Jesus. Amen. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for this new month, this ninth month of the year, 2020. It was not, it has not been an easy year. It's been a year full, full of difficulties. But we thank God that God has yet been real. God has yet been close to us. And he has been yet speaking and using all of us during this time of global pandemic. I want to share with you, I'm not going to keep you long, but I want to share with you uh, on, out of the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse number 5, on this Communion Sunday, I believe that there he is, a word in these scriptures, in this pericope, uh, and I want to read it to you. I'm going to be reading out of the New Revised Standard Version, so if you're reading King James, it'll read a little bit different, but we're going to read verse 5 through 10 out of the NSRV. Listen, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you. That God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from all sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us verse 9 if we confess our sins he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. Amen. Uh, that ends the reading of this text. I, I want to talk to you about living in the shadow of the cross, living in the shadow of the cross. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this moment. We ask God that you would empower us anew and afresh with your Holy Spirit. We pray this morning, God, that you would speak to your people by using this imperfect vessel. Father God, empower me, God, so that your people may receive what you would have to say to the church. Father God, we ask God to give us a listening ear. Father God, then give us a willing heart so that we may be able to live according to what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's everyone say amen. All right. Listen, I need to tell you this. Let's start off living in the shadow of the cross. Um, James, uh, uh, John, I'm sorry, John is about 90 years old. John is one of the last living Apostles, John began. Uh, John began his uh, ministry at about 15 years old. Can you imagine? Uh, at 15 years old, John was walking, watching Jesus walk on the water. 15 years old, John so went to the Mount of Transfiguration and watched Jesus pull back his this fleshly robe and declare and show to him. Uh, his divine glory. It is John who watched, uh, at, as a teenager, watched Jesus turn the water into wine. It was John at 15 that watched Jesus touch Jairus' daughter and bring her from death back to life. John now, 90 years old, is looking back over his life 
and there have been some too there have been uh, and there came into the church uh, these ideas these uh gnostic cystic people uh with this idea of what gnosticism was they said a few things they said that all matter was evil and they said that if all matter was evil, then Jesus was here, but Jesus was not real, was not living in reality. He was not real. He was not a part of reality. In fact, they believe, watch this, that if Jesus walked on the seashore, he would not have left any footprints. That was one view. The other view was uh, that Jesus was simply a man and when he was baptized by John at the Jordan River, uh, the spirit of Christ came upon him and then left at the point of his crucifixion. John says, well, I want to debunk these ideas, these Gnosticistic ideas. Uh, I want you to understand today, watch this, uh, that we held him, I saw him. I may be the last one, but I want you to know that God is real. And he said, since God is real, I need you to do something. I want you to live in the shadow of the cross. John would tell you that at 90 years old and walking with God for an extreme length of time, he would tell you that the only way to make it in this journey is to live in the shadow of the cross. What do you mean? Uh, what we have to do, John says, we have to be honest about who we are and who God is. See, I can't walk in the shadow of the cross and not be honest about who I am and be honest about who God is. When we don't see God in the right way, we don't see God in the way that he has revealed to us in his holy scripture, then we will never be honest with ourselves. Verse five says uh, that God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. What I want you to see here, there are three confessions uh, that contrast one another. There are the false confessions and then the true confession when you're living in the shadow of the cross. In verse six, he says that when the false confession comes in verse six, when we say, if we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. What Paul, what, what John is saying, that when you have communion with God, when you are living in the shadow of the cross, you will not walk in darkness. What do you mean? He says, when you walk in darkness, uh, we lie and do not do what is true. We tell God, God, we understand what you said, but I'm not going to walk according to how you just said it. That's the first confession. The first confession that's false is we cannot say that we walk in the light and then not do what is true. The second confession I want you to get is in verse number eight. The second confession says that the people who walk in darkness says, I'm not in sin. And when you say you're not in sin, you go even deeper into darkness and you go even deeper into deception. What, watch this. The expression of truth is not in us. He says this. He says, if you say you have not sinned, look at verse 8. He said, if you say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. When we make a confession that we don't sin, unfortunately, there are people who feel like they don't mess up any longer because they have moved out of the shadow of the cross. And so the third confession I want to give you, watch this, is death is this, watch this in verse 10, which says you have not sinned, now, and that moves us deeper 
into darkness. Watch this. He says in verse 10, he says to us, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. When you say you have not sinned, that moves us deeper into darkness and makes God a liar and shows that God's word is not in us. What do you mean? When we are not in the light of God, we can begin to move in false confession. False confession says that I don't, I didn't sin on yesterday. I did not sin last week. I have not messed up. Messed up. I've done everything right. I'm not in darkness. And the Bible says that the more you say that, you are actually sinning by giving glory to your flesh. My God, that's false confession. Those who walk in darkness are not exposed to the light of God's truth. And when they're not exposed to the light of God's truth, then they're not able to see who they are. So I'll never be able to see who I am until I'm walking in the light of God's truth. So we always have to be honest about what we are and who God is. Well, if I had some real saints who would say, when I'm honest about what we are, when I'm honest about what I am and I know who God is, what do I need? I need to walk in the light. Let me give you the contrasting statements, confession. Watch this. Number one, walk in the light is to live in communion with one another. Look in verse 7. And live in communion with one another and in reality that Jesus blood cleanses us from all sin. Verse 7. That's what I like. When I walk in the light. Look, let me read verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood. My brother said hallelujah. I said the blood of Jesus. His son cleanses us from all sin. So when I'm honest about who I am, when I'm honest about who God is, watch this, his light will expose me. His light will convict me. His light will challenge me. But the thing about it, y'all, is I don't have to stay in the darkness when I'm in his light. I can come to him because when he shines the light on, he shines the light on us so we can fellowship with one another. He shines a light on us so his blood can cleanse us from all sin. So I need to walk in the light. I need to confess, God, your light. And when I walk in the shadow of the cross, the light shines on me. But when the light shines on me from the cross, I have the cross and his sacrifice that cleanses me from whatever is exposed. Number two, to confess our sins is to experience in Jesus the one who is faithful and righteous, the one who forgives and one who cleanses. Uh, Y'all, I'm excited about that. That's what he does. He, uh, I confess our sins. What does it mean to confess? To confess means that I bring to God all that I've been through. The word confess, watch this, has to do with a judicial term, which means to renounce my sins. It means, means to confess in the context as a judicial term. It means to stand before God, our judge, and agree with him about our sins. Sin. Oh, if I was standing, one writer put it this way, the Supreme Court of Heaven, if they called you into accountability and you confess to him, if you agree with him, he says he's not looking for self-reproach. He's not looking for you to beat up yourself. He's not looking for you to try to fix it all by yourself. He says, what I need you to do is agree with me that you messed up. What I 
need you to do is agree with me that you don't have it all together. What I need you to do is agree with me that you need a power that's greater than yourself. What I need you to do is agree with me and know that I'm going to change you, that I'm going to cleanse you, that I'm going to make you righteous, not because you didn't mess up, not because you didn't sin. I've broken the power of sin over your life. I've given you an alternative to sin, but when you mess up, my light is right there. My light is not there to make you ashamed. My light is not there to, to condemn you. My light is not there to try to put a weight on your back. But my light is there to give you true freedom. To give you an opportunity to lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. I'm here to let you know that when you're honest about who you are, you have to know who I am. I am that I am. I like when God said that to Moses because when God said that to Moses, Carrie, he said that on the mountainside, his first name was I am. His middle name is that and his last name is I am. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. I can come to him when he exposes it. I don't have to come him with, with, with shame, but I can come to him knowing that his blood is able. Then watch this. He changes it up. He doesn't bring the third point. This is what he says. He says, watch this. He says, my, my, my beloved children, my dear children. He says, I want you to understand, my dear children, uh, that these words are a paradox. What do you mean? He says, it's a paradox. That there's power and removal. Watch this. So to walk is to have uh, the sins of our lives transparent. So if I'm going to walk in the light, that means the light will expose my sin. That means I have to be transparent before God. Some of us try to hide before God. We try to put on big words and nice clothes, but God sees you. He sees you. In fact, he knows your thoughts even when they are far off. God knows us. He made us. He formed us in the womb. He knows your uprisings and he knows your down settings. God knows you. And a walk in the light is to be exposed to the dark reality of sin. So the more I walk in the light, the more I'm living in the shadow of the cross, the more I understand the dark reality of my sin and the light of God's cleansing. Can I get a witness? It's a paradox. The closer and the more I turn to the light, the more I am aware of the darkness. I heard Paul put it this way. Every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul understood that the more I see the light, the more it exposes the dark reality of sin. But I'm glad that when I'm walking in between the light of God's truth and the light of God's righteousness and I'm walking and looking at the darkness of my life all I know is and that every morning he wakes me up he renews his mercy every time I go to him he forgives me every time I tell him that I need him he keeps on blessing me somebody ought to say something he keeps on blessing me I, I don't have to live. You don't have to live like Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve, my God, were exposed, when the eyes were opened in the garden, they they took fig leaves, they took leaves, sewed them together, made aprons, and hid themselves from God. But can I tell you, we are free to walk in the light of God's righteousness. We are free to walk in the light of the exposure of sin. You don't have to hide. You don't have to try to sew it together yourself. But we can walk in the exposure of his light knowing that in him is forgiveness and cleansing. We are freed 
to live for the other. We are free to let others know that because I'm walking in the light, I can love you. Because I'm walking in the light, I can lift you up. Because I'm walking in the light, I don't. you don't have to be ashamed before God. Just let God know that you trust him. Let God know that you allow him. You got to live under the shadow of the cross because you will mess up. You will sin, but you ought to stay in the light. And every time you sin, you have an advocate. You have a lawyer that will stand up on your behalf and say, Father, the still accepted in the beloved. Father, I still love them. Father, I still care about them. Father, I'm still cleansing them. I'm making them better every day. I'm bringing them up every day. I'm making them brand new every day. And every day, His mercy is renewed. Can I get a witness here? Paul said, that my God is rich in mercy. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he has not rewarded you according to your iniquities. I rewarded you according to your sins, but I'm glad that he took everything that you ever done he took every person every child molester he put it on his back every murderer he put it on his back every hate monger he put the sin on his back he carried it he carried it didn't he carry it to calories he but that's not the end of the story Because on that Friday He died Didn't he die, y'all? He died He died For the sun dripped in blood Moon dripped in blood He died For the sun refused to shine He died To the Roman soldier said Surely He must be he got to be the son of God. But that's not the end. Because if he only died, he wouldn't have power to make me brand new. But early Sunday morning, early, somebody help me preach this. Early Sunday morning, he got up. Yes, he did. With all power, did he get up, y'all? With all power, yes, he did. Power to change me. Power to make me brand new. Power. has power to do it in you. He loves you. He loves you. And if you walk in his light, it'll expose who you are. But the more he exposes who you are, the more he'll show you who he is. Thank God that he has changed us. Thank God he has broken the power of sin over our lives. But also thank God that I'm living under the shadow of the cross. I'm living under his forgiveness. And now there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus that walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Heaven smile upon you. I love you. God bless you. Look for seeing you soon. Come on. Let's just clap our hands as we. Hallelujah. Come on. This little. I'm
some praise on this morning. It's good to know that we can come before the throne of God, the cross of God, over and over again. That we can walk in the light of God's holy cleansing. That we can come and confess our sins when we have our missteps, when we have our hiccups, when we mess up. We can come before the throne of God, come to the cross on our knees, and ask God to cleanse us over and over and over again. Come on, praise team. As they begin to sing, I want you to make a decision for Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. so much you may say today I'm not worthy I'm not able to come to him because of the things I've seen the things I've gone through remember it's his light that shines on us we were made out of dirt the good thing about light is it exposes the dirt but does not contaminate the light you can come to God and he'll cleanse you he'll make you brand new if you would just yield to him Give God your everything. Give him your life. And I guarantee you he'll make you brand new. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you under, you're under the sound of my voice, I want you to understand this, that God loves you. You can be saved today. Contact us. Call us. Amen. Email us. Let us know you made a decision for Christ so we can celebrate you and help you on this journey. Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Take me to the King. Take me to the King. Hallelujah. God, and thank you for joining us today here at our virtual worship experience. We thank God for all that you have been doing and continue to do. You can support this church 
and this ministry by sowing a seed. How can you do that? Well, you can do that by Giveify. You can go to Cash App. You can come by the church on Wednesday morning or on Sunday morning. You can even take your offering and mail it in to the Maala Baptist Church. However, God lays it on your heart to sow and to give. We ask God that you would do that under the obedience of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. We look forward to seeing you soon and worshiping together.